Well, I think, uh, of course, the uh, INR is still, you know, somewhat susceptible to changes in global financial conditions because uh, despite the reduction we have seen in the current account deficit, it remains sizable still. So India still depends more so than other emerging markets, not all, but uh, some of them at least, on, on external funding. So, of course, they are susceptible to changes in that. With Fed tapering now underway, uh, although in a more controlled manner, uh, that, of course, uh, poses risk for, for India on that front. Um, I would say, however, though, I wouldn't suspect that we're going to see the same type of gyrations we saw over the summer. I mean, since then, the current account deficit has narrowed notably. Funding conditions have improved. And yes, Fed tapering is underway, but uh, it's uh, not being executed maybe in the more draconian fashion that a lot of market, expect uh, uh, market watchers were fearing uh, over the summer. It's gradual tapering we're looking at. The Fed wants to be cautious about getting yields up uh, in, in the U.S. and manage that very uh, diligently. So I think we will not see the same sort of disruptions on that front. I would also suspect if the currency does get under more pressure, as we saw over the summer, the would be a policy response to that that would help alleviate some of the volatility. So it's probably going to hover around current levels. Uh, the level of volatility will be lower than what we saw uh, over the summer. On balance, probably a bit of a bias to the downside to the currency, but not uh, not to a great extent. But but volatility, of course, in the short term <coughs> uh, will, will be there. I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, you know the INR is still you know relatively, shall we say, vulnerable uh, compared to to some of the other uh, currencies in the emerging market space. You know, as I said earlier, India still has a high current account uh, deficit. It's not as sizable as it is, for example, in Turkey uh, or countries like that. But it's still uh, sizable, uh, nevertheless. So I think it's still in the group of of shall we say currencies, EM currencies that are. Uh, relatively more vulnerable because of the external position, but but as I mentioned earlier, relative to where it was this summer, uh, things have improved, and that suggests that we're probably going to have somewhat less volatility on that front. But uh, I think uh, so. You need to look at it from that perspective. Well, I think. Uh, Gold, uh, I don't think necessarily looks 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 very very promising. Obviously, it's uh, received some 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 beating al already now with should we say Fed tapering on the way. <coughs> should we say the prospects of of uh, returns on on U.S. assets, uh, whether it's equity and, and 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 yields improving, that of course has not been a positive for for gold. So uh, I would still suggest that that's going to remain. A challenging a year for for gold for that commodity, crude oil prices. I mean, with the global economy uh, likely to to slowly shine through during the year, of course, from the demand side, that would add a bit of a lift to uh, to uh, to crude prices. But I think at the same time, if you look at the supply side of things, there are things under the way on that front <coughs> that are also pushing things forward, right? So that is is going to I would say contain the uptick in, in, in crude prices. I don't really expect much, much of an, an upswing there, even as the global recovery uh, s shines through. And, and also, the global recovery in itself will be quite moderate. So I, I don't really think we should expect a very swift recovery on the global front and therefore in, in demand for, for, for crude and, and other commodities.